Welcome to Cornerstone. Thank you for joining us today. If you are here in person, please silence your cell phone and have a seat. For those online, sit back, relax, and join us for a meaningful day of worship. Before we begin, here are a few announcements and prayer requests. Please keep the following in your prayers. Carrie, who had a PET scan and needle biopsy on Tuesday. Sydney, who is the daughter of Katie's friend, has been hospitalized in the ICU for 32 days with a lung issue. Ward's children's mother, Mary, died on July 6th. Please pray for their children, Rick and Susan, and their family. Janet's son, Chris, who has contracted COVID. Carol's six-year-old great-granddaughter, Kylie, has two cysts on her brain. Debbie's friend, Nancy, has been diagnosed with ALS. And please pray for anyone else who needs prayer that was not mentioned this morning. We are no longer requiring reservations for our in-person services. However, our greeters will use an iPad to begin a new check-in process that will help us to keep our records up to date and stay in touch with you. As you enter the building, please give your name to the greeter or check back with them sometime before the start of service so that we know that you have attended service. Thank you for your help. Tailgate worship has been postponed for the rest of the summer due to the summer heat and our ability to move worship inside. Thank you for those who participated in these unique services. Look around you. There's so much work to do. This world is in no condition for us to simply sit back and watch. There is a tangible, desperate need for Jesus, a glimpse of hope in the midst of hopelessness. Jesus experienced this. He saw it firsthand. The need broke his heart and filled him with compassion. He turned to his disciples and said, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. This alone should stir our hearts. It's a calling, a calling to make a difference, to share the truth of the gospel, to be a light in the darkness, to be the church. It's time for us to look beyond ourselves, to turn our focus to the field, to answer the call and passionately share the love of Jesus. This is our mandate. This is our mission. Are you ready to do the work? Jesus teaches it is better to give than to receive. If you would like to give a morning offering today, we have a few options. You may download the Give Plus app through the App Store or Google Play Store by searching for Cornerstone United Methodist Church, O'Fallon, Missouri. You can also give through our website by clicking the Give Online tab, our Vanco Electronic Giving, Online Banking, In-Person Offering Box, or by sending your check to Cornerstone through the U.S. Postal Service. Thank you for your generosity.
standing on the promises, in case you didn't recognize that. Very fitting for our message series. Welcome this morning, whether you're joining us in person or online, we're happy you're here with us. My name is Carrie Hartso. I'm the director of classic worship here at Cornerstone and so happy to be with you. So let's begin our time of worship together with a favorite, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Please stand. Cornerstone. To our guests, welcome. I'm to be able to worship with you. Let me say something to our online folks for just a minute. You know, we have spent a lot of time and effort to make online worship and online ministry possible. I want to make sure you understand that even though you're not in the room with us today, you are part of us. And just as important as those in-person ministries, our online ministries are crucial to so if you're with us today and you're thinking to yourself, I wonder if Cornerstone would really care about me if I had a need or concern or wanted to take a next step of faith. The answer is yes. You're part of Cornerstone too, part of our present and our future. So welcome to worship today. To all of you, it's great to be able to be in a, the presence of God together. Let's continue in worship with an opening prayer. God, you have brought us into this time of worship today because we are in desperate need of your grace. Whether we know it or not, you've been preparing for us today. And so, God, open our hearts and minds to you, that your son's grace would be part of our life, and that we'd respond to you in a way that changes us for the better. So, God, be blessed as we receive your blessing, as we offer ourselves in praise and worship to you. May you be real to us in a way that makes us into the people you want us to be. In Christ's name, amen. We find in the Apostles' Creed a statement of faith that binds us together. Let's join together in our statement of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I understand you're supposed to remain standing because we're about to sing another song this morning. So Carrie, come and lead us again in worship. i 
seated. So there's a video series that our video team put together chronicling the work we did during the height of the pandemic to continue to be the church. We wanted to make sure that we remembered what it was like to go through one of the most difficult times in our church's 200 plus years of, of ministry. It reminds us of where we were a little over a year ago and how God was with us then, promising to guide us to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. We didn't think we were equipped for a time we never anticipated, but it turns out, as we look back on that time, God was with us in ways that really changed us for the better. So watch this video as some of our staff reflect on where we have been. Mid-March, I was at a conference in New Orleans, and while I was there, I remember the NBA shutting down because of players having the coronavirus. I just remember that Dr. Mike was out of town that weekend, and then the news started kind of blowing up about the pandemic, and different cities and the government started talking about possibly shutting down. And I remember getting the phone call saying that we were going to cancel services for that week. And in our heads, I think we thought it was going to be two weeks, maybe. So we really weren't thinking about any kind of long-term effects of the coronavirus. Um, we were trying to brainstorm what we were going to do to keep in touch with the congregation. Started working right away to develop a phone tree ministry that connected everyone in the congregation to volunteers who would keep people informed of what's happening in the church and collect prayer requests and make sure that people are just staying in some kind of contact with each other. But and we needed 30 people to cover all of the people that had some kind of contact with the church over the last, you know, several years. And so what we did is we just started breaking it down in groups of eight or 10 for each person so that they could stay in touch with the congregation. Uh, but we got to a certain point where we realized we weren't going to be having in-person worship in a building anytime soon. And so. I think the first thing of emphasis was to work on the uh, electronic giving and just make it possible for people to continue to support the church that they very much want to continue with their support and to make it as easy as possible to do I, that. I, we've so. still kind of, I still kind of worked it even though we were shut down. I still, you know, made sure, okay, are we going to be able to get stuff from caring and sharing. And Mike they, Cochran mentioned in a staff meeting we should consider a parking lot worship. To me, it was inspirational, it was fun for folks, and it um, exceeded any of our expectations. Parking lot worship will be something that, that goes from being something that's nostalgic in our minds of those early days of the pandemic to one more way we can create worship that's meaningful and sincere and, and beneficial. And for a little bit, we um, we did drive drive up only, so they wouldn't get out of their car. They'd tell us our, their name. We'd write it down, ask them if they had any extra, um, you know, needs. And the media group and the video group, just with their self initiatives, where they needed to be for this virtual service, that was just fell right into place. So I think once we did open to the church. Uh, they come in the building, uh, uses hand sanitizer, and we make up 20 bags, usually about 13 items. Uh, There's one thing that I have been thinking about for a long time, and I think that we really need to be going live streaming. I feel like we're missing so many people that we could be, be reaching right now. Tw 2021 would require us to be able to have extensive uh, virtual ministry technology, capability, and experience in order to just be the church in a way that people could participate so in together. We had the finance team with the finance chair leadership 
in those years, I uh, started looking through all the funds and what funds do we have that are discretionary funds and which funds are uh, designated, like the pet fund and the food pantry, those are those are specific, very specific, but we had discretionary funds like the the clothing uh, box out front and over time a year. So a, a fairly good amount of reserve dollars were planned ahead of time for what was called sanctuary upgrades and um, new technologies. We've you... had over 500 views in all of our worship services for Cornerstone Virtual Sunday in 2021. There's a there's a real demand for us to have really excellent worship that's easily accessible and watchable. And you know, God is, he's given us the money. We've gotten two very large donations. I think everything is a God moment because what God reveals comes out in your works. That there were just little seeds being planted all along the way. The, there was a lot of preparation in the a couple of years prior to the to 2020 that gave us the framework for developing uh, a lot of different layers to virtual ministry that we didn't realize we were developing. The mastery of technology w was happening even even weeks leading up to the the beginnings of the pandemic and, and we didn't know how the steps we were taking was, were preparing us it ha it required us to be ready before we knew it it can be amazing to look back and see where god was with us when we we didn't realize it getting us ready for steps we never anticipated having to take the video team, I appreciate so much their help in putting that together. We, we realized as we were putting the video together that we were already taking next steps that were following through with what we were meant to do. So uh, the online worship streaming that we're doing now is something we were able to put together even since we recorded that video. The idea that God is with us and preparing us for the next steps we're meant to take in faith really comes from uh, uh, Bible passages that remind us that the God who is and the God who lives is the God who walks with us. In Ephesians 1, verses 11 and 12, today we're going to discover through the message translation of the Bible that God is literally preparing for us even before we're ready to exist. And God walks with us all, this, all the way through our lives. Here are these words of life meant for you and me today. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This series is that we'll discover that uh, God is working in us, making promises to us about our lives, and that as we look backwards on where we've been in our life, we see those promises being kept by God, and then we look forward, building a life based on the promises God says will be kept in us and through us. These promises lead us to live better by faith with eternal life in mind. Today I want to talk about how God is revealing next steps. God is revealing next steps for you, for me, for the people of Cornerstone. It's been my experience that God promised to reveal the connection between our past and our future. That connection leads us to understand what our next steps in faith can be. Can you think about how God might have, in the past, helped you to connect your past with your future? This is what I believe God wants us to be thinking about today. Promises. We all make promises. Sometimes we get in trouble and we say to God, God, if you just get me out of this, I promise I will, dot, dot, dot. Have you ever made a promise to God like that? Did you keep your promise? Some of you are involved in worship right now because you have to keep your promise, right? I don't know what you promised to God or to the person sitting next to you, 
but I appreciate you working on that promise. Now, others of us, we've made promises to God and discovered those promises might have been a little bit more, let's say, aspirational than we anticipated. Or maybe if you're like me, you made a promise to God and you didn't realize where it was going to take you. Because you never imagined wearing a robe on Sunday morning for 27 years and discovered that's just, that's the life. Christian faith. It teaches us that we discover God is with us even when we don't know it. And that through Jesus Christ we experience the fulfillment of promises God's been making in our lives long before we knew it. Really the first promise in Christian faith that that stands at the very core of who our faith is or who we are meant to be as people is this idea that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. This imminence of God in our lives walking with us is that foundational promise that we lean on as we move forward in faith. Where is that promise of God with us going to take us next? First, I want to suggest to you that we can look back and see God was with us. Just simply that. We can look backwards and see God was with us. We can look at the video we just watched a moment ago and be reminded that even just a year ago, during a very confusing, chaotic time, that God was leading us through great difficulties at the very height of one of the most difficult times our world has experienced in in recent history. I was just talking to a staff member last week about that first few weeks, and the staff member reminded me that I was a mess, privately. (laughs) Publicly, I look normal to you. Well, as normal as I'm going to look, but privately, trying to figure out how to be a minister without being with people in physical proximity to people was a challenge for me. The, the young minister at 24 years old who was one of the very first to use email in ministry. I can remember at 27 pastoring a church and having the, the, the email address on all the bulletins. And my father coming out for a visit to see me. I lived in Virginia at the time. And he said, email? What is that? And why would a church need it? Amazing to think about how far we have come with technology. That young minister that I was, who adopted early technology, became the the still very young (laughs) minister who was behind the times, technologically speaking, who adopted the technology just enough to be able to do the things that was needed in order for me to function. And here at Cornerstone, I was grateful to have many people staff and volunteers, able to adapt technologies to help me do the ministry that, that's required here. But last year I discovered uh, I wasn't prepared. The rest of us were more than we realized, but I wasn't prepared at all, completely. And so how was God with me back then? Well, I didn't have a heart attack or stroke. And I didn't drive anybody else to drink, which is really amazing. Uh, Again, talking to my son, who is a a junior this year in college, we were talking about how last year I was just, just almost unteachable when it came to using Facebook and Facebook Live. And if it weren't for a deadline of, in 30 minutes, I need to be on Facebook so all of you can see me in a worship service, I probably still wouldn't know how to do half the things I do. When we look back on where we've been in our life, when we use eyes of faith, we can see God is with us, guiding us along our way. I don't think this is an insignificant thing. I think this is a a crucial thing we should be aware of and we should be thinking about, that God is with us when we look back on where we were in our past. It's a confidence. to be with us. As I think about that, with eyes of faith, we can see God preparing a purposeful life for us. Now, I think this is important for us to consider. This exercise of remembering last year, 2020, helps us as well to see how even before 2020, God was preparing us to go through the difficulty we were facing. And one of the ways God prepared us is to help us understand our lives had meaning and purpose 
and that we can participate in the great good God is doing in this world. So I hope that wherever you might be right now, you're hearing this truth that your life has mattered to God long before you realized it, that you, your experiences, your uniqueness, it's part of God's overall purposes, and you are important. So maybe we stop there for a second, and we think about this just for a moment. How is it that you are important to God? In what ways is your life currently making a difference in God's great eternal good, in the plans God has? What are you doing now that God promises to use for good in this world? That can be difficult to imagine sometimes. But I hope that for some of you right now, that this truth is breaking through into your heart and mind, and you're beginning to think about how you really do matter to God in ways that are crucial to God, that God loves you that much. Faith in Jesus Christ inspires a mindset. It inspires eyes of faith that look for the life of purpose God has designed for us. Once we, we see and feel God loves us, then we have to look for what are we meant to do. Again, the scripture says, long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and everyone. Are you experiencing glorious living that's an interesting phrase that the translator uses. Life of Saturdays for you. I can only hope to one day experience a life of Saturdays like you are. It's easy during these life of Saturdays to miss the glorious life of purposeful faith in Jesus Christ because every day is the same except for doctor visits or the days when you put out the trash. Every day seems about the same to you. Living intentionally for Jesus Christ means waking up each day and at some point saying, I am going to offer my life to God through Jesus Christ and I am going to live in a way that glorifies God. This is what glorious living means in the translation we're looking at today. How can you glorify God? This is at the heart of purposeful living, receiving God's promise and continuing to live in this promise that God is with us and looking to the future, to live purposefully into the future by glorifying God with how we live our lives. You know, our calling, our vocation, our life's job is to serve God and others as Christ serves us. I remember once saying to someone a long, long time ago that I have a job. Oh, everybody does. What's your job? I, I'm a pastor. Wait, wait, that's not like a job, is it? Like, what else do you do? No, this is all I do. I'm kind of busy at it. And then someone else I met another time said, they were a church-going person. They said, your job is greater. You're, you're, what you do is more than just a job. It's a calling. You got to separate it. I said, wait, uh, I, I get paid money and I have to use those dollars to actually pay. I have bills. So it seems like a job to me. When you get retired or when you're a kid in school, you don't have a job, so to speak. Or do you? Is there a greater purpose to our life? A fulfillment of the work God is doing in us? that we can call a calling, a vocation. According to the scripture, there is. We are meant to be people who understand the reason for our creation, the reason for our birth, is for each of us to hear the call of God in our life and to live as God's servants, imitating Jesus Christ and serving others as Christ has served us. One uh, Christian writer, a, a famous person named Henry Nouwen, he was famous in certain circles, uh, 
He wrote this, the ministry of the body of Christ is not something that requires professional credentials. It is a vocation. It is a vocation. Each of us claims by virtue of our baptism in the body of Christ. Some of you may think, well, my life is not like yours, Pastor. You have this special calling. You're wearing this robe that has the stripes on it, meaning you've got way too much education. <laughs> and you may say to yourself that, or to me, you don't have that kind of education. Well, it turns out that each of us is equipped by the Spirit of God to a simple calling, and that is to realize we are meant to live each day glorifying God. And as we do that, we fall into an everyday activity of service to God and others. Have you ever decluttered your life? Last year, we decluttered part of our house. Wow, that was exciting. And where, and where, ter, tore, tore me up in, inside when I found out how much I had that I never needed. Is your personal life that way too? Can we declutter ourselves, spiritually speaking, and get to a simplified faith. We're called. We're called to serve God, follow Christ, live in the Holy Spirit. Again, Ephesians 1 says, it's in Christ that we find out who we are. When I was a little boy growing up in the 70s, for those of you who don't think I'm that old, I'm not, so I'm just making a story up right now. When I was growing up in the 70s, People were still talking about finding themselves. To me, as a little boy, that didn't make any sense. I didn't know what finding myself meant. Why were these people living in vans with flowers on the driving? I didn't understand any of that. But I've discovered that each of us, at certain points in our life, try to figure out who we are and what we're meant to do with the time we have in this world. The Scripture calls out to us today. The Bible says to us something that we're... We're challenged to believe that it's in Christ that we find out who we are. We always look to other people to help us define ourselves. And oftentimes, we discover we don't know who we are because we're waiting for someone else to tell us. Here the scripture says to you and me, that as we trust Jesus Christ and we look at who he is and listen to what he's said and pay attention to what he's done, we understand how to live our lives. We discover who we are. Again, Ephesians 1 says, it's in Christ that we find out what we are living for. It's possible. It's very possible to wake up every day to have a very clear sense of who one is and what one is living for, right? You wake up in the morning and you have a, a clear identity. You are a, and you name the job you have. And you've got to get up, and you've got to get dressed, and you've got to go to that job. Or you wake up in the morning and you are the child of, and you get up and you go and play. You wake up in the morning and you are the grandparent of and you're getting up to take care of those grandkids or to see them or to call them or hear what I'm saying? And yet, as we try to identify who we're meant to be, we keep searching because we're not satisfied. Here the Bible says, as we look at Christ and encounter Christ in our lives, we realize who we are and who we're meant to be living for gloriously living for God. And the reason we do this is because we see in the past God with us and discover even before we were born, God was excited and preparing a great life for us. Sometimes we get confused and think that a great life means world our life. 
or that our life will lead to us being so wealthy we can build our own rocket ship and go off into space. Turns out there's only about three or four of us in the world that will do that. But if you have enough money, by the way, we can contribute to the Mike Gillen Gets to Go to Space Fund. And uh, that can be both good and bad for you, depending on your situation. You know, sometimes we have grandiose ideas about what our life is meant to be about. And we miss the great blessing of a life lived well, lived in love towards others, in a way that is the counter-argument to all of the striving and the dissatisfaction and the chaos and the anger and the frustration and the intentional efforts to take from each other. When we follow Christ and we offer ourselves to God and we discover a kind of satisfaction in the simplicity of imitating Jesus Christ, we can glorify God by discovering the joy of those who we love and who love us. I remember watching a show a long time ago, and um, there's a line in a movie. It was something like, you know, there's really something great when someone says to you they love you. It was a really simple line, just a little part of a movie, but I keep thinking about that. I saw that movie 20 years ago. There's something really great about someone simply saying that they love you. God is saying to you today that Jesus Christ gives his life up for you because you are loved. And now you have a chance to live in faith with Jesus Christ and simply enjoy being loved by others and offering that same love and service to others. It will change the lives of those around you. The more your faith is simplified to be a reflection of Jesus Christ, You know, sometimes the next step in life often appears with painful slowness. Do you know what I mean? Oftentimes, we want to take the next step in life. We want to wrestle the the next step out, figure out what it will be. And it just doesn't happen. We just can't figure out what to do next. Or whatever we're going through seems like it is time slowing down and us moving as if we're moving through jello can you imagine living in a a room filled with jello how much slower you would move imagine the conversations in jello by the way sometimes i've had folks that i've known and it feels as if that we're having a conversation where i'm talking to them and they're in a a big vat of jello and i the messages to them and from them just take forever to get to me Have you ever felt like that in life? It could be you're going through a great time in life, but you're thinking, what's next? And you just can't figure it out. Most likely, though, there's a frustration, a a challenge, a difficulty, a pain. And you're saying to yourself, when will the next step in my life appear? especially people of faith. It's amazing how Christians rush decisions all the time and try to force God's hand. God, I promise to do whatever you tell me. Just do it right now. Tell me. I'm tired of waiting. Those are usually the conversations that lead to a lesson on patience for the next three years, by the way. Sometimes the next life step is slow in appearing. And it's painful in that process. Somehow, God promises to be with us in those times. I can tell you last year, there were times when it felt as if every day was one big day. And I just didn't know what the next step would be. Or if I would make it. I had to start running again just to break up the monotony. That was painful. You know, we, we are never forced to take the next faith step. We have to choose each step with God. Now, life forces us to make choices. I mean, there are times, circumstances, the actions of others, they work on our lives, on us, and we have to choose something. 
But my understanding of the way God works is that God never forces us to choose to say yes to Jesus Christ. I guess if you're forced, it's not really a choice, is it? We're given a chance to decide, how am I going to live each day? Will I live faithfully towards God? Again, Henry Nouwen writes, remember, you belong to God from eternity to eternity. You are loved by God before you were born. You will be loved by God long after you die. Your human lifetime, long or short, is only a part of your total life in God. Life is just a little opportunity for you during a few years to say to God, I love you too. We get to choose to say to God, I love you too, God. We do it verbally, and we do it by the way we think and live. I really am convinced it's important for us to choose to say yes to God, to choose to say, God, I love you just as you love me, and I'm going to live a life that glorifies you. That is a good life because Jesus Christ is reflected in how I live. So this week, what do we do? What do you do this week? Why not? Let's just make this practical, right? What good is faith if we're not living it? So let me start by suggesting to you this week, pray that God will reveal one step forward in faith for you. It may not be a big step, maybe a little one. Pray this week, God, reveal one step forward in faith for me. Then pray this week, God, help me every day this week to take one step forward in faith. So seek some revelation from God, a clarity of vision, of heart, and then take that step. Maybe the step will be little. Maybe it will be something like, you have an extra bottle of water in your car this week, and you see someone asking for assistance at that intersection that you always see them at, and you offer them a bottle of water. Maybe this week you're driving down the road, and it starts raining incredibly hard, and there's lightning in the area, and you look over and see your pastor running, stop and pick me up. <laughs> Yesterday, nobody picked me up. I had to go all the way. I ran halfway out, away from my car. I was not near anything, and I, it started to rain right down. Oh, you got to be kidding me. The only people I saw out were deer, and people driving in cars very dry. So this week, ask God, God, what's my next step of faith? Then take it. Maybe it's just something little that seems insignificant, at the time to you. But I'm telling you, God is preparing you already and has been working in your past to get you ready for that moment when you can say to God, I'm ready for the next step. And then you'll discover God is walking with you into that future because this is who God promises to be. Emmanuel, God with us. Promises revealing that God is with us, preparing us to serve to step out on faith, to choose to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Each day this week is an opportunity for prayer, an opportunity to, to remember more than just our own needs and concerns and desires and pains, but also to lift others up too. Before our service began, we mentioned some prayer requests. I want to mention a few others to you today. I hope you'll be praying for our sister church, Centenary United Methodist Church in the city of St. Louis that during a storm recently had its steeple destroyed. They're worshiping in just a little while, even though their steeple is gone. We're praying for the church to continue to be the church there in, in downtown St. Louis. Grateful no one was injured. I hope we'll be praying for Todd and Audrey. Todd's mother, we discovered, uh, or just found out, died uh, this weekend. We're praying for Todd and Audrey and their grief. Also for their son who's battling a brain tumor. And then I discovered yesterday that uh, one of our former members, his name was Nick Brown, that he, he died just uh, the other day, uh, had an illness and um, went to the hospital and then had uh, complications that, that quickly led to him, him dying just a day or two ago. So we, we grieve with Nick's family and, and uh, his friends as well. I know you brought joys and concerns with you this morning. Let's take a moment and talk silently with God about what matters most to us. 
Then I'll lead us in a prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our God, you call us to be people of the Word, people who put our faith in the Bible and by that faith live lives that glorify you. Today we, we look to you for strength and direction, believing that you've promised in our past to be with us and have been, and that we can see that as we look back, but also that you're with us now and leading us into your future. As we lean on those promises, God, we, we seek you out to help those we are concerned about and praying for today. We remember our sister church, Centenary, in St. Louis City. God, bless that church as it seeks to be your hands and feet to its neighborhood, even as they deal with a part of their building being destroyed, as their pastor said, The people are the church. The building is just temporary. God, work through them. God, we pray for Todd and Audrey and all that are like them who are grieving loss right now. We pray for Nick's family as well. God, be with those who we know who are in grief, who are in great need. Reveal to us how we can be a step in the direction of you. Now, God, remind us of what it means to be your people. Teach us to pray as we remember your son's prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I hope this is a week of prayer for you, where you discover God walking with you. Maybe the Lord's Prayer is that prayer you say in that time when you really need God the most. Well, let's continue to worship. Our our song that we're singing now is Spirit of the Living God. Let's stand together as we sing. great to worship with you today. I wonder what it will be like for you this week to experience the, the Holy Spirit in your life, ever present as you walk through your days and weeks. I hope that you discover it's an experience of God's love and joy for you that leads you to live better by faith. Let me offer a closing blessing as we conclude our worship time together. Now as we leave this place, the grace of God and the light of Christ go before us. Be blessed this week knowing that God is with you. Lean on God's promises and offer God's grace to others who are in need of this same grace. Be blessed. Amen. Speak.